Yeah, what's going on? Yo, still thinking about going live, but <clears throat> just been getting busy. I'm talking about Tariq Nasheed and these other agent provocateurs. I think it's become pretty clear now to people that these people are clear cut agent provocateurs. <clears throat> but before I get into that, let me just say that I just came from Sam's Club. And um, I was about to, excuse me, once I saw the line, I was, I was about to turn around. But then I said, you know what, I need some food. I wanted some lemons. That's what the hell I needed. I know you're saying you can go get some lemons anywhere, but damn it, I ain't standing in line on anywhere. So I went there. Lines were long, and people were wearing masks. I was the lone outcast without a mask. I was going to go in there without one. But since they had the police out front, <laughs> I figured uh, there's no need to cause an unnecessary scene. But at the same time, if they didn't have the line counting people uh, in groups, then... I probably wouldn't uh warn one. So hey, if anybody was there, you can see that it was me because I was the lone guy. I think I was the only one that I saw. I don't have a surgical mask and I don't plan on buying one. But that's just me. But what I did have in the car, I had a I get a, a drying towel that I use for the car when I go to the car wash. So I um you know, I folded that up like they do the bandanas and put that around my uh, mouth. It was hard to breathe. And I said, God damn it. Yeah, I had to be a conformist, mainly because of the police were out there. And because everybody was looking at me when I didn't have the mask. Like, oh, this guy doesn't have a mask on. I'm like, oh, boy. I had to get what I had to get. And it's a damn shame you got to use that identifier to say that you're under control. But again, at this Sam's Club in Elmsford, New York, you got a lot of people. Most of the people there are these Latinos. So, like I said before, those are the main ones that always comply because they're new to the country. So, you know, it is what it is. I got what I got. I got to admit, I do kind of like the app because the app, you can add things to cart to tell you what's in the store and what's not in the store. And it's accurate. And I was going to try and have them pick it for me, but I was ordering some um, turkey bacon, uncured stuff. They say you got to keep it at 40, 40 degrees. So I said, they might just pick it all and then keep that shit out. So I said, oh, let me just do it myself. And I wasn't going to get in anyways because I had to get in the store in order to pick it up. So I said, I might as well just get it myself. So Now, Sam's is a little different from BJ's. It's similar, as you know, but they have some things that BJ's does not have. Like if you get the... Chobani yogurt. BJ's has the one in the blue with the standard boring flavors. <laughs> While Sam's, they have the one in the yellow with the pineapple, banana, strawberry. What else is in there? I think, uh, I don't know. Ras no, raspberry's not in there. Pineapple, banana, strawberry, mango, and something else. Those are more exciting yogurts to me. And they have their frozen fish. BJ's has frozen fish, but theirs is not quite like uh, Sam's Club. Sam's Club is, you know, they, it's that good stuff. And, and, and the good thing about the app, it lets you get on and, you know, basically look around. 
before you get in there. And that way you don't have to get in there and waste time. Because when I go in the store, I don't like wasting time. I like knowing what I'm getting. Go in, get it, get out. That's what I like to do. So I did that. Then the lines were long. So then I realized they had a check and go option. You can scan the shit on the phone, pay for it on the phone, show the receipt on the way out. That's that. Good thing everybody else didn't know. <laughs> or else I would have been waiting in the lines. But I was waiting in the line while I did it. And then I checked it out just to see which one was going to move faster. But, you know, that's that. Other than that, I wasn't even bothered wearing a mask. Because, you know, how I feel about the damn thing. And I guess the cops are out there, you know, to intimidate. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's basically what it's all about. I think I drink most of this water. God damn. But yeah, as far as essential items, it looked like I, I didn't need the toilet paper because I got lucky that time. I'm not, I don't like the overstock. You know what I mean? Because one thing I hate in the house, I hate clutter. You know? So people were buying a whole lot of shit. I guess they got the same idea I got, which is you don't want to have to keep going through this, so just get as much as you can get. But I had, you know, I, I buy things when I got a taste for it. I, I had lemon, making me some natural tea with lemon. That's what I like. And then I was going to get the limes. I like limes too now, but I just had my mind on lemons. And I inside, I probably should have gotten a lime. I think limes tend to last a little bit longer too in the refrigerator but um and the tomatoes were cheaper than bj's you know each store has something that the other one doesn't have but most of them have both of them usually have the same things but um and when i do go live i'll be going live on a new motherboard same system new motherboard because i bought a motherboard, I'm getting to the topic in a minute. I just had to get this off my mind <laughs> because I got a good deal. Two weeks ago, I ordered a motherboard from Amazon. You heard a lot of people been complaining about Amazon not shipping shit out, which is true. Like I told you, I had Prime and it took two weeks. I mean, damn, I even had to argue with them. So I bought a motherboard that normally retails anywhere from 409 to 429 plus taxes. Now, Michael Center, they had a open box one that I, that was there for the longest. It was 339. You know how it is with that. You wait too long, you missed it, but I kept looking at it for like two months. It was there. I was waiting for them to lower the price. And then I said, fuck it. I guess nobody else is getting it cheaper. So then I went on the Michael Center. I was about to reserve it. It was gone. I said, every time I'm thinking about actually doing it, it's gone. Just like I was thinking about buying a new CPU. It's rare that they had this one in, but then it came in. Waited too long. It was out of Brooklyn. Could have gotten it, but I BS for too long. But Michael Center now, they want you to prepay. Before you can just reserve, now they just want you to prepay now. I don't know, man. I, I, that's, I know they don't want to touch people's money, but you know that's bullshit. You mean to tell me if somebody found a stack of money on the ground, they're going to say, I ain't touching that because it might have corona? Come on. <laughs> Everybody, most people touch that shit all day. But, um, so I found it on Amazon. They were selling it for $320. They had about four different versions. They said, and they had another one for $308. They said,
birds can't stand these motherfuckers. I mean, they did everything they could do to persuade these things to get out of here. See this thing. They did everything they could to persuade these things to get the hell out of here. Most of them are gone, but they still stick around. Anyway, they had one at 308. It said, light damage on top and sides. Missing CD. Then the 321 said, contains everything. But they all said used. The other one said used good. The one I got said used very good. It said box. It comes with original box. It will contain damage. So I was trying to wonder how that's going to be. So, you know, I kept looking around to see about people buying used Amazon stuff, electronics. Some said their shit was looking brand new. Others said, you know, some accessories got uh, changed up, <laughs> you know. But even during the two weeks, I was like, man, I got to get this from someplace else. These people are bullshitting. So it finally came Friday, last Friday. The install was quick and easy. And of course, the way I do things, buy new, sell the old one on eBay. And I'll use, I'll usually get most of my money back. I have a feeling with this old motherboard. If you were paying attention to my journey with these motherboards from last summer, going back and forth to Long Island, <laughs> you know that I paid $100 because I got lucky and paid $100 for these uh, motherboards. And this one, you try to buy it in the store now, it's close to 500 so we'll see how high it goes up to. I already got people bidding on it already. So it's going to sell. I already knew it was going to sell. <laughs> the question is how much? But anyway, I got the thing. I was like, damn, let's see how this is. Op uh, open the uh, Box that came in, then saw the box. I was looking because I was like, I want to see the damage to see where it was to see if it hit any vital components. The only thing I saw was a tiny ass nick on the box that looked like, at best, somebody pressed the pin a little bit into it. At best, didn't touch anything. It was factory sealed with the tape, and I know that because the tape things were round and they were, um exactly evenly spaced not you know you could tell it wasn't by hand and i said damn shit look new as hell too bad there's not a rebate on the damn thing so i opened it up made sure everything was there but everything was spanking brand new the bag that it was in i looked at it to see if the tape if it was retaped that wasn't retape. I said, man, this shit is new. The heat sink and, you know, the, uh, not the heat sink, but the, the plastic uh, shrouds. Still had the plastic on it. But you could tell it was new because it was loose plastic. You know, it wasn't that some brands had that tight stuff on it that you can keep it on. But this was brand new. It was brand new. I said, oh, so either somebody made a mistake or they hooked me up for the weight. But either way, I said, I got the deal. I got the deal of the century right here. Well, it ain't the deal of the century. The deal of the century is when I got those $100 motherboards. That was 500 The only bad part was the other two, they didn't work all the way. Uh, uh, they work, but they didn't work enough that if I were to sell them on eBay, you know, somebody might have a problem. If some, Even though the, the part that didn't work was very insignificant. But you know how people on eBay can be. So that's why I said I got to I gotta bring this shit back. Even though I could have made a killing. But, um... So, yeah. <clears throat> I went back to my Gigabyte brand. That's the brand I like. Anyways, I felt satisfied with that. But I still canceled Prime, though. 
Because <laughs> it's not doing anybody any good right now. So let me get back into this Tariq Nasheed. And I'm going to tie this into the Black Authority. I'm going to tie this into the Young Pharaoh, the Michi X, and the Boyce Watkins. I'll call him Dr. Boyce Watkins since he's an actual doctor, not one of those fakers. That's the one thing I can give him credit for. Um, I'll tell you this, man. I said it for a while because I caught a lot of the episodes when they did it <clears throat> or said it, but a lot of people didn't, but now they're saying it even more. And you know what I'm talking about? Because other people are talking about it and they're noticing that these guys are agent provocateurs. They all support Donald Trump. They keep talking that Democrats are trying to keep you down shit. Which is indicative of Negro conservative. This guy driving in here with the mask on. I mean, what are you driving? Uh, if you're in the car by yourself driving, what do you need the mask on for? But it is what it is. I mean, I'm overwhelmed by the conformists. People walking down the street, they don't a lot. Some have masks on, half don't. But yeah, I went to a gas station, cashing a ticket. They didn't have a mask on. I didn't have one on. Nobody told me to put one on. Maybe because I'm tall and they don't want any problems. But <laughs> they don't have plastic up on the uh, counter and shit. <clears throat> like that's supposed to stop something. I mean, damn, if a virus is supposed to go in the air, you think uh, plastic. It's supposed to stop it when the virus supposedly can go over the plastic or under or around. I mean, come on. All this shit is strictly visual. That's all it is. Mind control. And I know some people are saying mind control for what? Since the video is not about that, not, I'm not about to get into it. <laughs> I have other videos that explain that. But... Again, when most people are paranoid, this is why, I, I, see these people walking in the garage, they got the mask on. This is why I didn't even bother, and this, these, you got a couple here, they just drove in. The driver has a mask on, the passenger doesn't. <laughs> I mean, what sense does that make? But that's why I didn't make a big deal out of anything, and I'm not even trying to... Uh, argue when people are panicky and scared I, I really don't like being around people and you don't make them any, any more panicky and scared it's just like when you're the passenger in the car and the driver is going too fast and reckless and you feel you could die don't scream and yell at them be calm and if they keep trying to laugh and act like it's funny you know, you got to play that shit off. If your life is really in danger, you feel that they're going to die, uh, kill you. Tell them, hey, man, pull over. I got to go to the bathroom. Let me, uh, oh, yeah, I've been waiting to go to this place right here, man. Let's stop here. Let me get some of that. You want something? Or I got to use the bathroom. Once you get out the car, I'm taking an Uber. <laughs> you know, that's what you do. <laughs> because you see those videos of the crashes. Uh, like, I'm sure you saw that uh, video on World Star where that Mercedes crashed into that uh, left lane, into that truck, going so goddamn fast. And if you had a passenger in there, so you got to die because of somebody else's stupidity. Anyway, let me get back to the main topic. <clears throat> These guys are agent provocateurs. Said it on many videos before. People, I don't, I don't want to know, if, I don't think that they didn't believe me. I thought I missed the spot. I don't think that they didn't believe me. I think um, what it is, is they were unsure. Because, you know, these guys are supposed to be so popular and so honest. They were unsure. Instead, these guys, I think a lot of people were, 
instead of thinking, okay, well, these guys, they're not out to cause any trouble. They're not agents, are they? They're coon agents. When they go out and tell you, the dusty, broke, Negro, that the Democrats are manipulated. That's the, this is these people's words. The ones that they keep asking and begging for donations from. But yet, you're dusty, broke, and a coon. I mean, every time you hear Tariq Nasheed speak, he is calling you a coon. He's making fun of black people every time. He doesn't have anything positive to say. He's always talking in that slave voice. But the funny part is, what he talks about with these black people is the life he's living. The life of a coon. The life of a hypocrite. And while I'm on it, I'm going to put the video up that I uh, got him on inst Instagram with. I was looking to see my comments. I guess he took them off. I don't know how he was able to take it off, but yet I could still make the comments and because I got them two times. The second time he knew it was me, the other people were like, why don't you go on live then? If you got all this to say, I said, shit, I put the request in. My man ducking and dodging. So my man mentioned me my name. I'm put that shit on. Um... So I'm getting his ass on Instagram. I'm, I'm going to get his ass soon. Don't worry. I told you I'm in, I'm engaged with Tariq Nasheed. So it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Got to catch him off guard. See, my man, he knows who the fuck I am now. You know, I told you, he's been watching my goddamn video. Why else would he avoid? Because you see what he does when he puts people live any other time. If somebody's talking something, he's like, let's bring this person on and see what they got to say. But he thinks he can out joke his way and embarrass people. It didn't work with that girl to ask him about his white family. And it won't work with me because he can't out joke me. <laughs> he can't out think me because I like I said, man, going live. That's my that's my main thing. I like doing it live. Spontaneous. That's my specialty. <laughs> that's why certain people like to avoid it because they know when I get ill, I get ill. <laughs> I don't get disrespectful. See, when I tell my jokes, I don't like, some people get nasty with, like Tariq Nasheed, he is nasty with it. Calling people coons, bed wenches, uh, butter biscuits, everything. You know, if the men were not black, you would think that what he's saying came out of the mouth of the Ku Klux Klan or something. Now, the man does videos in his swimming pool I don't understand a man not taking his shirt off. I don't, but maybe the man got some kind of tattoos or his body ain't right or something he wants to cover up from his past that could be identifiers or something. I don't know. But the man ain't taking his shirt off in his own swimming pool in the dark. I find that pretty unusual. <laughs> He's always talking about Oh, I hear sound. Could be a coyote. Now, the man is afraid of coyotes creeping in his backyard, but not a white supremacist with a gun ready to put a hit on him, which goes to show that the man is not concerned about any white supremacists because the man is a coon agent. That's why he's not concerned about any white supremacists. Because they can easily pick his ass off if they wanted to. As you can see, he's not living like a man who's concerned about some white supremacists. Because if he were, he would be ultra paranoid as if he's going to get hit. But he's not concerned about that because his whole routine is bullshit. That's why. He calls you, he calls us, Dusty Coons, bro, which you'll see in the video. He says, oh, he's just, uh, he's jealous because I'm living well. I can't get nice things. That's what the greedy narcissists always say. 
They always want you to be jealous. That's why he continues to show his shit off. To the dusty. Why would you show your shit off to the dusty? He, uh, Like I said before. He's not teaching you game. Matter of fact, he's not even selling you a book. To put you up on quote unquote game. To get money. He only put you up on game. To learn the art of macking, which he has not mastered. I mean, he has a young wife that is a little bit slow. And he acts like he pulled a dime piece. Now, the girl's not ugly. She's she's cute. And she actually, you know, she seems to be cool. Hold on. Yeah, she seems to be cool. There's no pause on this. <laughs> but she seems to be cool. She's cute. But of course, the man is a major hypocrite because he keeps talking about these white supremacists out to kill. You can't trust them. But he can trust Connie. He can trust his brother-in-law, uh, Emilio, whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> Jose. He can trust him. <laughs> and he can trust their extended white families. So I guess those are not suspected white supremacists. They've been cleared. Right? <laughs> and again, I, I look at, see, he, people like Tariq Nasheed, they're like Brother Polite, another coon agent. They talk a whole lot. I'll give you a whole lot. I told you and when I ran down that list, which I already knew before the list. You got people who give you information overload. But you got to know a great many things. Once you know a great many things, then you can't be fooled. They trick the feeble-minded because the feeble-minded is like, God damn, I don't know half of that shit. So I guess the man must be right. <laughs> you know, that's what they think. See, when Polite went up against Eric Muhammad, Eric Muhammad may not be as detailed because I've heard him, been watching him from almost the beginning. But he at least knew how polite was coming in his tactics. So he knew how to avoid the bullshit coming from polite. But see, it's not about the information overload. That's the distraction and the trick. So you got to look out for not just what they say. And Eric Muhammad did a good job of paying attention to what Polite was saying. You don't just look out for what they're saying. You got to talk about, pay attention to what they're not saying or what they refuse to say. Or if they do say something else that goes against what they're talking about, it's very short. For instance, when Tariq Nasheed throws in the Democrats are keeping you down. Suspected white supremacists. You got to stop. And he keeps trying to put down New York like he's trying to come up with another East West Coast thing. New York people are soft. Letting the cops slap you. I tell you what, Tariq Nasheed. <laughs> I know the LAPD is notorious for getting busy. <laughs> and there ain't no doubt about that. But why don't you come to New York and talk that talk to the police? let's see how you handle it and see if they uh, tell you to back the fuck up and then if you uh, say you're a suspected white supremacy see if they don't slap the shit out you see what you do <laughs> I bet you even if the cop was 4 foot 11 you ain't doing shit you do the same thing you complain about the people in the video doing and then you show the video of the guy in LA with the uh, dog calling the guy a cracker Seem like another stage video. But, I mean, that's a regular guy. Trying to act like, oh, people, guys in L.A. get busy because he's talking about a, a regular white guy. Let's show videos of them doing that to the LAPD. Because that's what he keeps insinuating, like, oh, black people out there get busy on the LAPD. That's bullshit. 
know that. That's all I ever heard. LAPD abusing the hell out of people. Admit I haven't heard it recently. They've been corrupt from the beginning. All police departments. But um, that's what he keeps trying to put in. These, these small things. To ignite or try to try and incite people to go out and kill because see what I when I talk these things these some people call them conspiracies either they call them conspiracy theories because they're ignorant they're agents or they just can't believe that when you tell people what people do that people will actually be doing these things when they read or see a biography or a story, a documentary on a, uh, on what mobsters have done, you're like, God damn, they kill all these people and nobody's doing nothing about it? You believe that? <laughs> you don't call that a conspiracy theory? You're like, oh shit, I guess they did it. How come that's not a conspiracy theory? Because those are supposed to be the bad guys. That's why you believe it. But the government's supposed to be the good guys. So you like, why would the good guys be trying to do this? But then you're the same people who talk about the Tuskegee experiment. And now she found a, took a moment to jab at that woman. He's always calling black people coons. That's what I've noticed. Doesn't matter if you're dusty or rich. That's the way he is. Byron Allen, he was cool with because he's got a lot of money. And a white woman. That's what Tariq Nasi wants. You couldn't go with an all white woman, so he had to get half because he has an image. But see, he better start showing Connie because once I engage with his ass, I'm going to ask him, how can you never show Connie? You admit your mother-in-law is white, but how come you go out of your way to, to make sure she's not seen? If you notice, when he's been doing his filming, especially the last couple of videos, he had the door locked, talking about use your key. I guess he guess Connie must have been there, and he had to make sure that she doesn't just walk in. Hey, Tariq. Hey, I'm. We're about to leave. <laughs> I wonder how he would react. I wonder if he would say, Man, get off me. Who are you? How'd you get in here? Some shit like that. Phony. I told you, man, I, I knew people just like this guy. His whole life is a fucking fraud. But, um, these agent provocateurs, Boyce Watkins, Michi X, Black Authority, both of those Negroes, if you notice, they keep talking about the same shit. At the same time, clear-cut activities of coon agents. None of them want to be challenged on what they're talking about. The black authority denigrates his callers. Yeah, I tried to get in. I didn't even know he was on blog talk. I just thought it was fucking YouTube. I tried to get in, but I had something cooking in the oven. He was taking too damn long. So I said, fuck it. I'll try them again. Believe me, I'll try them again. And I'm going to be cool. That's how I always start off, you know, test the temperature. <laughs> if they start getting disrespectful, I can get disrespectful. You know, um, what was that? I think it was last week the Black Authority was calling some, some guy called up. I start putting the guy down and shit. Calling him a, a coon, a do-nothing Negro. You're 40-something years old. You got your adult daughter. You ain't doing nothing. Well, I asked Mr. Black Authority, Mr. Nashi, Mr. Watkins, Mr. Pharaoh, what are you motherfuckers doing? Nothing. The same thing the Black Authority accused that man of doing. Nothing but talking. That's all you're doing. He said the guy is hoping that somebody else will get busy. That's what they're doing. Trying to provoke you into getting busy. Not getting busy, working, trying to get you to get out and start killing. The dusty, broke 
Negroes. They want you to go out there and start the killing. How come they're not going out there and starting the killing? Well, you can look at Tariq Nasheed and you can see why he's not going out there because he's comfortable. He's comfortable living in his white area. He, he, he said, oh, I don't live around white people. I live around Indians. That's bullshit. I know from my personal experience, anytime a black American moves in near some Indians, East Indians, they move the fuck out as soon as possible. And I know they ain't different in Los Angeles. <laughs> I know that. You know that shit, man. You know that. <laughs> um, he just said that to act like he's living in a non-white hood. We know you're living in a fucking white hood, man. So stop the bullshit. I mean, who do you think you're fooling? Negroes like him want to be around white people. You know, the man didn't go to L.A. for nothing. He, he wanted to get a piece of that entertainment pie. And even though he's low-budget balling, you know, I guess he got a little piece coming from Alabama. But he's the type he feels that he needs. See, what I was trying to do, and I'm still not revealing everything, even though I ain't get the kind of support I needed, as, as is always the case, uh, when people are really trying to do something. But what I was trying to do is I was trying to rely on nothing but black people. So you don't have to go get you a white woman and use her money or anybody else. But, hey, if you got to use a white woman and get, get a white woman to use her money, so be it. Just remember the mission, that's all. <laughs> that's... I mean, right now is the time to do it because they just going at the black men like crazy. You just make sure that you use their money and it's you're not falling in love. That's all I got to say. But these guys are not going out. They're not thinking about going out booted and suited. Black authority sounds like a fucking wimp. Tariq Nashi looks like a wimp. Fucking lotion and lipstick. I mean, what the fuck kind of man uh, you think is going to war? Uh, yeah, we're, go we're about to deploy right now, um, gentlemen. Get your ammo ready. Make sure your equipment is in order. This is real. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, Colonel. Yes, Mr. Nasheed. What is it? What is it, private? Uh... I forgot my chapstick and lotion, man. <laughs> I can't go to battle without that. I mean, come on, let's, let's get real. I mean, what kind of man is going to war when he has to make sure he has lotion and chapstick on and make sure he's not ashy? Motherfucker, you going to war, you just might be ashy for real. <laughs> but that's what he doesn't want because he's a coward. He wants money. That's why he keeps telling people to put the money on the Melanoid Ministries. He tries to make it like he's joking, but he's serious about the shit. He wants dusty people's money. But anybody who critiques him is a dusty, broke, jealous Negro. But yet he wants our money. This guy is something else. He's something else. So these guys want you to go out. Number one, it's another demonstration of trying to see if they're powerful as directed by their masters. See, if for some black people, and, and you know, they want to see who is listening to these guys. What, what is their power limit? Just like Farrakhan said, I want 10,000 men. And, of course, never followed up with nothing. He followed up with Malcolm X. But he ain't followed up with nothing else when it comes to that white man because he's a Freemason. I gotta, and you argue with people on YouTube, he's a Freemason, show it. Then you show it, then they got another excuse. If it's real, then he's done some great things. What you mean, if it's real? It's off the Nation Islam website. 
Now they're lying. <laughs> I mean, come on. Farrakhan followers are something else. And watch them all flip once he dies. Can't wait. I'm, I'm really tired of the guy. Goddamn killer. Uncle Tom. In a Caribbean. But, um... The Nashis, the people, the Negroes who are on YouTube who are comfortable. See, Nashi just built a... <clears throat> Excuse me. Now she just built an enterprise on YouTube collecting money from you. Dare I say idiots to make a man like the keyboard musician always said. He collects from you to pay his bills. I won't say that he needs it. He might need it. He might get it just because it's there, but if he keeps asking for it, that sounds like he needs it. Damn sure wants it. But yet he wants it from the Dusty. How come he's not getting it from his equals? Huh? That's the problem with these people. They're trying to, if they love black people, why are they trying to go out and say, you got to stop being a bitch. You got to start killing. Why don't you motherfuckers lead the way? They're not going to lead the way because they're fucking cowards. Cowards never fight. They just sound tough to try to get others in the fighting, doing what they would love to do but a two fucking bitch out to even attempt to do. I bet you if you slap the shit out of Pharaoh, Boyce Watkins, Tariq Nasheed, or that black authority, I bet you they won't do shit. I guarantee you. They just look stunned like, what the fuck was that for? That's it. They're not gonna uh, even attempt to... <clears throat> Get at you because they're scared. <laughs> my man's looking like, oh, you're going to take my good parking spot. <laughs> I should, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I know you hear that car, huh? <laughs> but I ain't going to do that. Number one, I don't feel like doing it. And the other spot I'm in is all right, too. But um, this is what these guys do. These guys are fucking agent provocateurs. I told you when Michi X said you need to go out and kill white people. How come these people aren't being arrested? Anybody else says go out, start killing the cops. They're getting paid a visit. I mean, that's the bottom line. But these guys don't get that visit. These guys can keep their YouTube channels up, keep the uh, the, the the keep monetizing their uh, videos, which is part of their reward. That's part of the payoff, the monetization slash super chats. Then there are other donations. Now you see. People are cutting Umar Johnson's funds off, except for anything he can get through the mail. I think he can still get his cash app, too. I wish a lot of these people would go after Tariq Nasheed in the same way that they're going after Umar Johnson. Because the truth be told, Umar Johnson is a fraud. Along with Tariq Nasheed. But I think it may be a case of one man is down, kick him while he's down. And the other guy has money, more prestige. So let's leave him alone. Dr. Boyce, the Charles Wu situation. Proving that he's being pimped by the Chinese. Probably like T. West is too. Because I could tell a hoe when I hear one. 
Come on, my man, caping hard for the Chinese. I mean, it's like the man was fucking hired. I, I wouldn't doubt if he was hired and just started talking about China's great. China's this. I mean, and then he accused Africans of making up some uh, racial story. He's supposed to be Afro synergy, but he's going to take the Chinese uh, and make up stories for them. <laughs> he's supposed to be making excuses for the Africans, not for the Chinese. But these people are hypocrites and bullshit artists. That's what I keep trying to tell people. You know, and other people, now they're trying to get with it and saying, I'm, I'm exposing frauds and stuff. But yet, see, when I do it, I do it based on evidence, based on the facts, based on what these people have done and said. I don't just call them out just to call them out. You know? This Nashi guy, see, this is very dangerous. Now, we know that nobody is really going to hear Tariq Nasheed or Boyce Watkins or bitch-ass Pharaoh say, we got to start killing niggers. They're not going to say, yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah, let me get my guns. I'm going to go and kill some cops. We know nobody in their right mind is going to do that. You got to lead by example if you want that to happen. But these guys will never do that because they don't want to lose what they've obtained. See, they figure that you're dusty and broke. So what did you, what do you have to lose? See, you these people forget. These people claim to be thugs. But they forget thugs are not superheroes. Thugs don't care about justice. <laughs> That's what you keep forgetting about. Thugs care about what you care about, which is the goddamn money. And styling, that's what the hell they care about. Thugs might kill you if you try to take something that they got. And even you scared bitches might hurt one of them. Because you're so scared to death. I told you, those, those are the most dangerous motherfuckers. The scared straight. I mean, I've seen too many. The tough people... You know, there are two different types of tough, tough people. The ones who project and the ones who internalize. And then you got the scared straight individuals. You see those are the first people who are first to pick up weapons. You see those fight videos. Others might fight with the fists. The scared straight. First thing they're thinking, I'll get a weapon because they know they can't fight. So they figure, let me halfway kill somebody, keep people away, and then people look at me as dangerous. But they can't fight. No weapons, they can't do anything. What's the bottom line? I just feel it's very dangerous. These guys claim that they love black people. Only one claims to be representing and speaking for black people, and that's Pharaoh. And I guess you could say the black authority uh, claims that too, since he calls himself the black authority. Then you got Nasheed, who keeps reiterating that he's not the leader of nothing. Because <laughs> he, that, that tells you right there, he's not putting his neck on the line. That tells you right there. If that didn't tell you nothing, his white family should have told you something, you know? <laughs> I mean, come on. It's just crazy. But, you know, people like the entertainment. They like whoever's got the big numbers. That's who they roll with. You know? But it's very... I, th I think when you tie it all in, when you hear what Umar Johnson says that we need the kill 10% of the thug black boys because we can never get through to them. And he said that they have to, we have to put them to sleep for good. I don't know why he had to scream it like that. He seemed like one of those mad men, uh, preachers, you know, that's why I said the man has to be a coon agent too. You know, it's finance and shit. I don't know what's up with that. 
But that coincides. You see Tommy Sotomayor. Others that keep saying. The niggas. As, as they want to call them. Thinking that if they call. People who black people. Who are supposed to be less than they are. Less intelligent. Less money. Less refined. That is less. Uh, uh, used to the white world. <laughs> uh, they call them the niggers. And they said they can all drop dead because they're useless. That sounds like the white man's eugenics. It sounds like Hitler. Because Hitler wanted to get rid of the retarded. He wanted to get rid of the crippled. Anybody who was deemed as useless, that's what corporations do. Oh, yeah, yeah, we don't need this department anymore. Everybody's fired. They don't give a fuck about whether or not you can afford anything, afford to live. You're fired. They don't need you. Well, oh, we're, we're closing this part down. Well, this is not making enough money. We're laying everybody off. They don't need you. Then if they need you again, they might call you again. Or even worse, never call anybody again and hire all new people at a lower rate. They do that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and that's not cool. But that's what they want. Now, don't get me wrong. I always said you can't save everyone because Pan-African dialogue they always say oh man i want all our people we got to unite and all that but you know it's a pipe fucking pipe dream but i always said only worried about those who are with it whatever whatever we're trying to do concentrate on them and not anybody else that's why i say we got to concentrate on black america and not any caribbeans and we, i told you the phonies like the tariq nashis and the yvette carnell's I told you they were phonies. But, you know, they draw bigger audiences, have bigger voices. So, you know, seems like they they must be credible. Why would they lie to so many people? Right? Already, Mr. Nasheed is backtracking from his foundation on black American bullshit. Because he's talking about that 1804. Oh, this Dessaline. Oh man, when you you gotta you got to check out 1804 so you can get this information. Why do you have to check out 1804 when you can just go online or buy a book? I told you it's 1804 flop. He needs some more money. So he wants you to buy 1804, which is about the Caribbean. I bet you his Caribbean people that he knows, he says, oh, I'm just joking. This is business. You know what I mean? Don't worry. I'm going to get back to uh, what I used to get into. Talks about Caribbeans, but he's promoting 1804. He's not concerned about foundation of black Americans. He's not concerned about Caribbeans. He's just a fucking coon. And I know you're listening, Nashi. Next time I'm on Instagram or when you go live, why don't you let me come on? But people like him, I know he has a million and one excuses. You're a dusty nigga, you're a coon, uh, you're, you're a jealous hater. You know, everything you could think of to try and push people back. But that's not how it's going with me. I'll be all that. Let's just talk. And I'll actually be respectful. But if you want to joke, uh, I'm not even going to say I, I got my I got some jokes lined up for you. Guys. Let's put it like that. So yeah, I mean, you can go there. I'm really good at the rebuttal jokes. God damn. That's that's my goddamn specialty. That's why motherfuckers down that uh, other channel. That's why they they couldn't stand getting into it with me. That's why they just gave the fuck up. <laughs> Cause they know goddamn. Once I get started, that's it. But um These guys are playing a dangerous game. I'm about to close this out. 
they know like religion, like anything else. The crazy people are the ones who will react first to any anything like that. That's what they're counting on. That's what they're counting on. And then once, let's say somebody did something, right? And they say, well, I heard Tariq Nasheed say we need to get busy. So I got busy. He's going to say, oh, no, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I ain't nothing to do with that. I don't control people's minds. That's a grown man. That's the first thing he's going to say. Now that jogger, what's his name? Ahmed Aubrey. Or oh, Amoud. <laughs> Sound like a comic book name and shit. Probably another stunt. I feel it's a stunt because the way they do it is the same MO. Put the video out. Get the outrage. Have people debating on why this, why that. Then say, oh, well, looks like he may have been doing something. Here's another video. It's all pre-planned. Um... That guy doesn't sound or look like he's a black American. With that name. But he said, you know, Tariq said, oh, well, you need to get busy. You got to stop doing that. Now, I agree that black people should get busy on white people. If white people do the same thing that black people do to black people, that makes black people get busy on black people. <laughs> I mean, you do see some videos with some black, white people, black people beating up white people, and there's always that one coon that always got to intervene and say, "Oh, okay, stop, stop." I wish they knocked the coon out. That's, that's what I'd advise people to do. I, that's what I'm advising. <laughs> but um, as of now, what I could do, I'm calling coons out, pulling their coon card. They need it. They need it uh, because this is dangerous. If white supremacists are everywhere, the man wouldn't be outside in his pool in the dark. Wouldn't be outside in that backyard in the dark. White supremacists can be camouflaged, ready to get busy. Yeah, while he's outside, they could be, you know, hiding somewhere and then come in, go into the house. When they come in the house, slaughter everybody. I'm just throwing out scenarios. But he's not concerned. So that goes to show when the man is not concerned, I mean, you already know what the deal is. So it's just, I, you know, before I go, let me say something else. I was on the website the other day looking at the explicit photos of celebrity murders or deaths or whatever. National Enquirer, I, I'm like, damn, I don't usually go on that kind of website, but I've been trying to find uncensored pictures of some things, and I know that for the first time I see the uncensored pictures of the OJ murders. I'm like, damn. They always had the black bar around her throat. Then I saw the whole thing. I said, God damn. OJ ain't no joke. <laughs> but, I mean, goddamn. You know, there was no no chance for survival with that shit. God damn. Cut a windpipe and arteries. She was done. Ron Goldman got fucked up too. So the what's that guy that South African runner, Pistorius, is uh when he shot that girlfriend, which I, I still don't understand, his excuse is bullshit. You hear somebody in the in the bathroom and you know that your girl's not by your side. First thing any reasonable person would be thinking, she must be in the bathroom. Oh, not a burglar breaking into the bathroom. But he shot her to see those pictures. I'm like, God damn. She was nice looking too. My man should have been lucky to get somebody. Maybe... She was cheating on him because maybe, you know, his legs, he couldn't really get the full force going, you know? 
Whatever the case is, these people are sick. That's all I got to say, man. And the prince, I wanted to see pictures of that. I was surprised to see that. And I was examining it, trying to figure out, okay, is this stage? Is this real? I'm like, it can really go either way, man. With that. I mean, there's some, those other crimes, you can see that the shit is for real. But the prince, you know, it looks more realistic than fake. But at the same time, it's not totally convincing. I mean, we still haven't seen official Michael Jackson pictures, so I'm like, what's up with that? Then they said that Prince had AIDS since the 90s. I'm like, so I posted that on Facebook because I'm like, that was news to me. Maybe I missed that. But again, I don't watch TV like that, so maybe I did miss it. So are they trying to say my man was gay? You know? Mike got accused of being gay, but wasn't. Prince looked gay, but got accused of being a man. <laughs> shit, uh, shit is crazy. Uh, you know, I don't know what to say, man, but I know a lot of these artists are dropping dead. Andre Harrell, Betty Wright, Little Richard, Steezo. I mean, it's crazy as hell. I hate to say it, but so many black ones. It's like all the black greats are going. And I said this years ago, it's almost as if they're taking down the best to make way for who? Other people, so others can compete. Like Mexicans, I guess. We'll see. My voice is tired. People will continue to watch these people I mentioned in the video. even though they're phonies and cowards. But I think everybody, what you should do is what I see a lot more people doing is going on their channels and questioning their asses and asking them, well, when you want us to go out and get busy, why don't you get busy first? What's stopping you from going out there? You got the guns. That's what Tariq Nasheed was talking about. He got the guns, go out there and do it. Of course, he's not going to do it because the white supremacy has a grip on his mind, makes him scared. With that, I'm out.